margaritas, hot tubs, and hotter rock bands. All heading to destinations unknown. From the high seas, here's your rock and roll cruise director, Eddie Truck. And welcome back, everybody, to Trunk Nation, broadcasting live Monday through Friday, 2 to 4 p.m. Eastern time, replaying every night, 9 to 11 p.m. Eastern, always available as well on demand on the SiriusXM app and broadcasting from land and sea and other countries. We are outside of Mexico right now on board the Royal Caribbean Brilliance of the Seas, and the cruise is Cruise to the Edge. One more day of this tomorrow, and then, like I said, Thursday and Friday of this week, I'll be broadcasting from the Hard Rock in Tampa at the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino, the Seminole Hard Rock, inside the Hotel Lobby Bar. That's free and open to the public if you're in the area of Tampa from 2 to 4. And then next week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, on board uh, another Royal Caribbean ship as we broadcast for the Monsters of Rock Cruise, right in the middle now of our Cruise Mania bringing you radio shows from the high seas. So we have a few minutes left to go before we have to wrap up the show. And the guy that just joined us now, his name is Roy Avon. And Roy was nice enough on my first cruise to the edge last year to, to sit there and, uh, and be a, a sounding board. Because Portnoy, you were running around playing with 75 bands. You were supposed to be my guy. <laughs> oh, and you... You, were, you were scarce on that one. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. <laughs> and hung me out to dry. So Roy over here stepped up and he became a friend. He was your prog coach. He yeah. was my pro- Would you give him good marks, Mike? Oh, is, absolutely. Is Roy well, the man? Well, I'm sure you're about to talk about it, but there's a book here in front of us that he wrote and basically covers all modern prog from the last, what is it, 15 years or so? More, 25. Oh, 20, 25. 25. Okay, I'm, I'm bad at math. <laughs> As I'm yeah. Old. yeah 20, so he, he knows his stuff, absolutely. So, Roy, tell us about your book. What is it called? Uh, Essential Modern Progressive Rock Albums. Uh, covers uh, sort of the biggest albums of the modern, what we call the modern prog era from from 1990 to, uh, to 2016, basically. And why did you pick that year, 1990, to start? What, why did you make that the cutoff? You know what? I, well, it, it stems back to a, a best of uh, albums list that we did for my website, progreport.com, which we did uh, the best albums the last 25 years, which at the time was 2015. So it just seemed like a nice round number to go back to 1990. But the more I looked at it, when, we, when I had the idea to turn this into the book, it's just a good starting point. If you look at the albums that came out then, it was Queen's Rake Empire, followed by uh, Fate's Warning Parallels, and then you start to get into Images and Words by Dream Theater. It sort of signaled the shift, I think, from the hair metal and, and Queen Drake and Fate's Warning were sort of introducing prog metal, and, and it, it, it's a nice shift from there. You weren't having the, 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 the prog pop stuff that was dominating the 80s. I think uh, there's really definite, if you look at the history of prog, you could def- definitely break it into you know, two eras. You had the whole 60s and 70s, then it kind of fell off in the 80s, and then came back in the 90s. So, I mean, we're now like in the, the modern heyday of Prague. And I'm looking yeah. at your book, Essential Modern. I, I wrote two books, Essential right. Hard Rock and Heavy Metal, with the word essential in the title. Yeah. So for you, what, what are, like, for the last 25 years, which you cover from 90 to 2015, what are your top five essential prog records? Did you, are they listed in order? And one through? They're, they're not list, They're not ranked. I, I chose to not rank them uh, because then it co- becomes even more subjective. Because you already get the how come you left that out of the book. And, and then you start to get into, well, why is that album number 17? Which is, you know, pointless. Uh, because they're all great. Uh, plus, it, it, doing chronological allows you to sort of see the evolution of where the where the genre went. So, so for my audience listening right now, who who maybe some are prog fans and some like me are you know casual awareness of it and like some things, don't like some things. Wh- yeah. What would you tell them, putting you on the spot now? <laughs> and don't feel pressured because Portnoy's sitting here if he's not <laughs> yeah, on any all, of the all, records. All five I Portnoy have the most albums in the but book. What, he's yeah, in the book a lot. Let's but, be. but what five records would you say in the last twenty five years right. are landmark? progressive rock albums well I, I have to start with images and words that that was the album that you're sucking up that to Mike changed now. it for me well it, it's in there i mean <laughs> well, look at the cover here it, i'm just messing it, with you images and words was was in 92 i was you know I, I guess 18 and that that was the album that really defined uh me rediscovering this music because before that it was just the older classic prog stuff and there was nothing really else like this going on so it's got to be images and words that's a start um the light by spock's beard i think is is Beyond Genius and, and the beginning of Neil Morse and all the stuff that he's done. Uh, you got to talk Opeth, Blackwater Park, I guess you'd, I'm sure you'd agree. Um, they combine death metal with, with progressive and, and all new sounds. Um, uh, Porcupine Tree in Absentia, I think, is their first major label debut, which 
uh, set them apart and introduced uh, a whole new. They they showed you could do prog without having to shred, mm-hmm. which was which was a new thing. Which a lot of the bands now are starting to do. Everything now is labeled under progressive, and just if it's experimental, if it's just different, it's labeled progressive. You don't have to do a thousand notes anymore uh, for it to to be considered that. Um, I'd probably go Stephen Wilson, Raven, that refused to sing would be the, the most recent. Mike, what did he miss? I would have, well, of course. It's, I'm, it's I, hard. I'm, I'm, off the top of my head. I mean. Oh, I know. These are brutal. Yeah, Trust me. I did yeah. a whole TV show of it. I know. Yeah. I, I, Transatlantic, I, Whirlwind has got, you know. I mean, I don't want to pick my own stuff, but I think he, he made great, great choices. It really covers, covers the, you know, the, the, the. The broadness yeah, the, of, of the entire progressive from the beginning scene. to today. Yeah. But uh, if you look just at the cover, there's ten albums that I think pretty much yeah. capture. No, you got Marillion in there, Devin Towns and Neil Morse Band, Flower Haken, Kings. Flower, Flower Kings. Kings were instrumental in the early '90s of the the sweetest Swedish uh, progressive sound. And you guys mentioned Queensrÿche earlier. I think they kind of walk a line. Or Queensrÿche have an acceptance in the prog world, or For they sure. they really do, huh? Yeah. They I always give them them and Fate's Warning as you do in this book the credit for predating Dream Theater. A lot of people say Dream, like Images and Words, was like the first marriage of progressive rock and heavy metal. But no, I, I say Queensryche and Fate's Warning were doing it yeah. before we were. Yeah, I mean, and the, even Iron the, Maiden the playing on Empire in that even Scott Rockenfield was doing on the drums with like the double ride and hi-hat and things like that, that was different than what, what was going on at the time. Yeah, that music means we have to wrap up the All show. Right. The book, uh, the author is Roy Avon, who is here with me. The book is called... The Prog Report, Essential Modern Progressive Rock Albums, Images so, and Words Behind Prog's Most Celebrated Albums. ProgReport.com, you can get in, and it's also on Amazon. There you go. Check it's it out. An amazing book. Uh, thank I you to Martin it. Barr. Thank, thank you to Carl Palmer. Thank you, Bumblefoot. Thank you, thank Mike you. Portnoy. Thank you, Roy Avon, all my guests today here on uh, Cruise to the Edge. One more show from Cruise to the Edge tomorrow. Check my Twitter. I'll let you know about the guests at Eddie Trunk. Have a good night, everybody, and thanks, Alex, hey, back in New York. Thank you.